What's up guys, in today's video we're going to be going through fixes for Geyser and Floodgate to make sure that your Bedrock players can connect to your server. We're not going to go through installation so I have another video, plus it's pretty easy to install plugins now. You can either go through your plugin list on whatever you're using to host your Minecraft. Most multi-craft or systems like this will have a plugin list that you can download it straight from your server management system. Or you can use things such as FileZilla to transfer it over to your plugins folder or FTP file access. Either way we're going to go on the assumptions that you've installed it at this point and when I say install I mean the latest version so come to Geyser and download the latest Geyser version and Floodgate and upload them both. And we're going to want them both in the plugins section or the plugins folder. Once you've uploaded them, started your server, you're going to notice that it's going to have your geyser folder, floodgate folder, geyser jar and floodgate jar as well. One thing you're going to want to take note of here is the IP and port. You might have done this bit already, however, I'm just going to take a note of this anyway. So with our IP and our port noted, we're going to come over to files. And in fact, I do suggest stopping your server. I know most of the time you can change configuration easily without stopping the server. However, I do prefer to stop it. Change anything over by coming to files, configuration files and then we're going to start it back up afterwards. Also bear in mind to get the configuration for Geyser or Floodgate here you will have to upload the plugins first, start your server then stop the server and we're going to be at this point that we are now. So after that and you should find this on your first page on the server config if you don't it's because you've got a lot of plugins uh, just use the little number or whatever flick through the pages and find the one that says Geyser Spigot config.yml and then click on this section or edit depending on what you're using. So let's go through some of the main problems here um, that people will have. That's usually if they leave the port as this, if your server has a different port, and problems with the IP address or authentication. So let's just go through the whole thing right now as a whole do over. We're gonna get started by replacing the port with the actual port from the server. If I pull up my sticky notes right over here, we're gonna see that the port is 25575. Yours may differ to that one. However, I'm gonna replace the existing one, which is the default bedrock one right here. We're gonna paste that in. And we're gonna make sure there is a gap of one space between uh, the symbol right there and the number. These things here don't really have anything to do with the actual working of it, however it's uh, you know, usually more interesting to add a message of the day one and two for the bedrock clients, and also a server name that will appear for them. If you do, just make sure that you have it between these quotation marks, and you can add whatever text you want in the middle. Now it's time to scroll down a little bit further, and this is where some people can have problems, and um, it's not listening to the right IP. So first make sure that there isn't a hashtag here, that means that this is actually working, and the address is currently set to auto. Now leaving it as auto will automatically configure address, port and auth type. However, sometimes I found that it doesn't work, so what you can actually do here is replace your server IP with it. To do that, simply grab your server IP if you have copied it, highlight over auto, and then we're going to paste that in, again making sure that there is just one space between the symbol and the number. Then we're going to come down to the next port section, which is underneath the address section right here. So we're going to come to port, I'm going to change this 6 to a 7 to actually match our port of our server, so now we know what it's listening to. And then finally, we want to come down to the auth type, we're going to highlight over this, and we're going to change this to floodgate. Because you have floodgate, get installed this now um, we'll use this as an authorization type meaning people don't have to sign into a Java account to make an account log in or anything like that and that is pretty much it those are the essential parts that you need to do to actually let your bedrock clients connect I have had many servers that have been running guys there for a long time I've never had to play with any of these things here as long as I've made sure that these top ones and it's listening to the right places then you're gonna be pretty solid so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna save of course just make sure that what I've just said is definitely working let's come back to the actual server itself and let's start it back up. So whilst that's starting let's load up a bedrock version to make sure that we can load up on the latest version. Right so let's go to Minecraft for Windows, we're going to make sure we're on the latest release as always with bedrock and then we're going to get to play. Awesome we're all loaded in, let's go over, hopefully we've already got the server on the list, if not we will have to add it. I'm pretty sure it's this one, let's just check and there we go 25575 and that's our IP as well play.secoservice.com so that is clearly the same server. Now of course time to make sure that we can join with the latest version of bedrock and as you can see we've done that like literally within minutes um, and that is all it is so you know if it's still not working I'd recommend just you know deleting what you have start up a new geyser one or start up a new file so it's default and then just follow this guide make sure you put your port and your IPs in the correct areas and <laughs> spawn underwater but that is literally all it takes 